What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. This is gonna be part two of the Razer MX350 dual motor project, which I'm planning on giving away to one of you guys at the end of the month. On the previous video, we went over the poor condition this bike was in when we initially picked it up from Craigslist. It was completely clapped out. All the plastics were all bent up and the front wheel, rear wheel, everything is bent. So we took everything off and stripped it down to bare frame refinished the frame and started test fitting the parts that we're gonna be using, such as the fork, the front hub motor, the rear hub motor, disc brakes. I also went over the general idea of what we're doing as far as the powertrain, but today we're gonna to be working on the plastics, the seat, installing the disc brakes, flipping the tires, and going over the battery that we're gonna be using to power up the two different controllers that we're installing. I keep getting asked what type of fork this is since it appears to fit the Razer MX350 pretty well, but I haven't provided anyone a link simply because I don't think it's a really good design simply because of the lower and upper triple trees don't seem to be very durable as far as how it's designed. I can see this potentially cracking if there was like a 250 pound dude that rides this and hits a pretty bad bump. So I've decided to get a second set of triple tree clamps just to double it up and ensure that this bike is safe to ride. I've been thinking about what seat and plastic set I wanna use with this bike since the stock one seems very uncomfortable for a full size adult. There's simply just not enough padding on there. I tried test fitting other seats that I have laying around in the garage. So this is a stock Talaria, a uh, Sting R seat, and this CRF 50 seat. And I just simply can't get anything to fit properly just from how the frame's designed. So what I'm thinking about doing is stripping down this stock seat, removing the cover, and adding additional padding and replacing the cover using this modified CRF 50 seat that I already have laying around. And as far as plastics, I'm actually gonna reuse the original MX350 plastics, but I am gonna modify it just so it's a little bit slimmer. Then I'm gonna be using a CRF50 rear fender that I previously had on one of my Razer MX500s. I'm just gonna slim this one down as well and redrill it, cut a slot right over here, chop down this front section. Hopefully I can get it to fit correctly with the back of the stock seat. And here's how the plastics turned out. My cuts are certainly not perfect since I'm doing it with a grinder. My Dremel broke. And here's how the rear fairing looks. I slimmed down the sides to match the width of the seat. We're gonna use the fork guards. I already have everything scuffed down, so we're gonna wipe it down with some acetone and then lay down some primer. Now I'm gonna lay down two layers of base coat. I'm just using some automotive paint by Duplicolor. Well, something interesting happened mid spray session. The can pretty much failed and kept dripping paint all over the place and it pretty much ruined the <laughs> finish. So I had to change plans in the middle of painting. What's interesting is the cap also disintegrated when I took it off. I, th I think I may have had this can sitting on the shelf for like over 10 years now. Now that the base coat has had some time to cure, I'm gonna take some 1500 sandpaper to try to scuff down some of the imperfections on the surface before we lay down some clear coat. Thank you. 
While the paint is curing on the plastics, let's go work on the seat. I'm gonna take off the original cover on the 350 seat, and then we're gonna deconstruct this used CRF 50 seat. So here's a closer look at what the factory seat looks like. So you can see the foam padding on it, it's very thin. It's not even a quarter inch thick on the front and rear edges or in the sides. It's actually what makes it kind of uncomfortable for a larger rider. And since I'm modifying this bike for speed, I'm hoping that this is likely gonna be an adult or a big kid that's gonna receive this bike. So I'm gonna be throwing on a taller seat from a CRF 50 that we're gonna trim down and modify to fit the MX350 seat base correctly. And then I'm also not gonna be using the suede material anymore because this seems like it's gonna get dirty pretty easily. And then the stock seat cover is torn up. So I'm gonna go with like a gripper style seat, like a traditional dirt bike like this one. So that should be here later on tomorrow. So let's go trim down this foam seat and get back to the bike. Got the new 160 millimeter disc brake rotor mounted on the wheel. We also flipped the tire so the tread goes the other way since we're gonna wire this thing up to go the opposite direction from when it was originally designed to on the Kugo M4 Pro. But bad news is I think I may have pinched the inner tube since it doesn't hold the air very well. So we're gonna have to order a new inner tube. But good news is the seat cover for the new seat came in a little bit early. So let's take care of that real quick. Here's a closer look at how the seat turned out. It's definitely gonna be a lot more comfortable than the stock seat since it's got a lot more padding. It may have actually raised the seat height a good two or three inches from factory. So it's a lot more appropriate for a big kid or an adult rider, though it's far from perfect. As you can see, it's got some sharp corners since um, it's just the best way I could fold the vinyl on the front and rear edges of the seat. I don't claim to be a professional in any way, so nothing's gonna be perfect, but I hope you guys appreciate it since this is a pretty big project for me to give away. Finally got the set of replacement inner tubes. So we're gonna replace the busted one in this front wheel, but I also ordered a 140 millimeter disc brake rotor set just because I test fitted this on the fork and attempted to align the caliper um, yesterday and it seems like I'm gonna have to use an excessive amount of spacers to make that work with the bracket that we have laying around so it seems like that's gonna work better with 140 millimeter
here's a closer look at how that turned out. The 140 millimeter rotor was perfect for this setup, though I did have to grind the inside of the caliper bracket on the fork. I had to take off a little over an eighth of an inch of material just to move the whole caliper further away from the disc brake rotor. But other than that, it was perfect fit. And then here's how the doubled up triple trees look like. So this should be extra durable and much safer than what it was. I also had to get a 220 millimeter 10 mil bolt to replace the factory stem bolt since this is not gonna be long enough for the additional triple trees that we added on there. battery for this frame. Check this thing out. So this is a Electron Co 48 volt Eon lithium battery pack. I believe it's a 20 amp hour, which is rated for a peak output of 100 amps. So this should supply enough power for both controllers, but check this out. It's pretty much snug to the millimeter on both sides of the frame. I don't know if Electron Co still makes this. I actually got it from a buddy of mine. Shout out to Nate W from the DC area. He's always into hooking up razors as well. successfully flipped the tire on the rear wheel without popping the inner tube at the 140 millimeter rotor mounted. Now we're going to be using the Matric Solutions adapter to mount a brake caliper onto the back since MX350s usually come with a uh, drum brake setup so there's no such thing as a caliper bracket back here. So we're going to be mounting this between the axle and the mounting point at the bottom of the frame here. I used the same exact bracket for my pocket mod project a couple months ago. Make sure you check out his page, it's Matrix Solutions. I'll have a link to the exact listing for this bracket in case you're interested. Actually came with some funny ass stickers, check this one out. I ended up having to grind down the front bolt for the caliper bracket to get everything else to line up correctly. But other than that, we got it. I'm using a stock MX650 wheel spacer on the left side that I had to grind down a little bit to get everything to the right position. On the right side, I'm using another spacer with a 12 millimeter inner diameter from one of my aftermarket wheels on my MX500. Now got the front brake working, rear brake working. Got the controllers in the general area that I wanna mount them. I just had to fold the mounting tabs in a 90 degree angle so it sits flat on the battery tray. And I can't believe how well this actually worked out dimensions wise. It's like the cutout on the plastic covers was perfectly the size of the two controllers combined together. So I might not actually have to do any sort of trimming on the plastic covers. But besides that, I might just have all the wiring above the plastic covers and just keep the two controllers contained in here. Damn, 
considering I put this bike together with pretty much scraps I had laying around in the garage, it does not look too bad. Obviously it's not perfect uh, how I cut up some of the plastics and retrofitted them together, but I think it passes off. I'm just waiting on a XT90 connector so we can supply the controllers with power from the battery. And then we're just gonna wrap up the wiring to the motors and wire up this thumb throttle and um, light switch, which I'm actually using as an on off switch for this bike. Then we should be able to take this out on the final video, which should be in the next couple of days. But please let me know what you guys think so far. A quick reminder, if you are interested in winning this bike, all you have to do is like this video, be subscribed to this channel and throw a comment down below. I'll actually be making an announcement on Tuesday, December 31st about who's getting this bike. I'll also be making a post on my community tab, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I apologize if I haven't been very consistent with my post recently. I've had quite a few life changes the last few weeks. I actually ended up leaving my job and switching roles to make more time for YouTube to be able to make more consistent content for you guys. I've got a lot planned for all of my bikes, my Razors, the Talaria, the Roar Mantis, Tudio, and I also got some packages from Electro & Co. So we've got a lot to go over the next few weeks. So make sure you stay tuned to this channel. But if you like today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with any of my projects, make sure you subscribe to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.